Hello guys and welcome once more to the GC Math panel online. In this particular paper, we are looking at the correction of June 2018, Pure Math Mechanics and Pure Math Statistics, paper two, question three. Guys, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel now and leave your comments and share our videos with different social media groups in which to find yourself. That is the way you're going to motivate us to make more videos. And the more you motivate us, the more videos we make, the more you benefit. And may God continue to bless you as you prepare for your exams. To have the complete video corrections, please click on the link below this uh, video, the link in the description below, and you will have the link to actually have access to all the corrections of the remaining questions. Most of our questions are not on YouTube, so it will be advisable if you go to our website, www.gcmaskplan.com, where you can have corrections for all of the remaining papers. We implore your indulgence to subscribe to this channel and to call others to subscribe. If you visit this website equally, you will have other questions which are not just on mathematics. You will have GC O level and A level past papers, as well as many solutions. There you equally find the WhatsApp groups where you can join us online and we begin our preps every year at the end of August. So please join us now for we are the winning team. Let's answer this question. So this question reads, differentiate with respect to X. The first part is lean one plus X squared on X to the power five. So to differentiate this, we have a rational function, right? So this is a rational function. I'm going to do it directly. So I divide the x to be equal to, we keep the bottom constant. The bottom is x to the power five. Now we differentiate the top. When you differentiate the top, what are we going to have? So the bottom constant, we differentiate the top. The top is a logarithmic function. And to differentiate the logarithmic function, we are going to have the derivative of the core divided by the core. So we are going to have two x, all that on, one plus x squared. And it's very important that you put it in brackets like this. It's very important. So bottom constant, differentiate the top. Now minus the top constant, minus the top constant. So now minus lean one plus x squared. And we now differentiate the bottom. That will be give us five x to the power four, five x to the power four rather, all this on x to the power five, all raised to further raised to the power two. So we continue to simplify this. Uh, we, we can factor out x to the power four from numerator and denominator. And we multiply all through, that's numerator and denominator by one plus x squared. We are going to have two x. So here I factor out x to the power four. So one of the x comes inside. So that'll give us two x times x, which is two x squared here. Now we have multiplied this term here by one plus x squared. So we are left just with two x squared minus. So here we have five lean one plus x squared x to the power four times lean uh, times one plus x squared rather. So this is it. All this on the denominator. So with the denominator as well. We are multiplying by one plus x squared, and this is what we obtain. So x to the power four can cancel out what we have in the denominator. And this will give us two x squared minus five into one plus x squared lean, one plus x squared, all this on one plus x squared times x to the power six. So this is the derivative of this function. Now the b part is to find the derivative of sine squared x plus one. So the first thing to note here is that sine squared x plus one is the same as sine x plus one all squared, okay? So this is the same as sine x plus one all squared. And we can differentiate this directly by, we bring down the power, y prime because we bring down the power two. You differentiate um, x sine x plus one, what do you have? You have cos, as, yeah, sorry, when you bring down the power, you copy the function to the power one, you differentiate sine x plus one, you have cos x plus one, and they differentiate this core of sine x. When you differentiate this core, you're going to have just times one. So this gives us two sine x plus one cos x plus one, which is the same as sine two into x plus one. So this one is the same as sine two into x plus one. Now the sub two of this question reads, 
f of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus x plus five. Find the set of values of x for which f is increasing. So this type of questions, it may be nice if you start by looking at the domain of this function, or after that, you look at the derivative. So from here, our f prime is three x squared minus two x plus uh, minus one rather. You equate f prime to zero. And when you solve that equation, you will have x to be equal to uh, minus one third or x equals one. Now you are going to look for the gradient of this function in three different regions. The region where x is less than one third, the region between one third and one, and the region above one. So that we see the region in which it is increasing or decreasing. Equally, you can use a simple table like this to check uh, the, the signs of y prime as it changes, that's of the gradient function as it changes, and then you conclude whether it's increasing or decreasing. Because if y prime is negative, that's the derivative is negative uh, for a given x value, then the function is decreasing. If it's positive, then it's increasing. So let's look for the value of y prime at x is less than one third. Take any number less than minus one third and fit in this function, in this gradient function you'll find that the result will be positive. You take, for example, um, negative one. So three times negative one squared is, is three. So three minus minus two, that's five minus one four. So it's positive, right? Now take any number between minus one third and one. If you take zero, for example, it's going to be negative here. And if you take a number greater than one, of course, this is going to be positive. So whenever y prime is positive, that's the gradient function is positive, means that the curve, the function is increasing. When it's negative, it's decreasing. And when it's positive, it's increasing. So the set of values of x for which f of x is increasing should be from negative infinity to um, negative one third. One third is not included. And we continue from one from above to positive infinity. That's an interval form. Or you can just state it by saying x is less than minus one third or x is greater than one. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to share our videos, especially on Facebook and on WhatsApp study groups. Please, we are begging that you share these videos because it can help somebody who is dying somewhere, somebody who's in need somewhere and you would have saved the life of a brother or a sister. Equally, in sharing these videos, you are promoting or you are encouraging us to make more videos. You are telling us, yes, we like your work, do more, do more, help our friends, help our brothers and salvage us as we prepare our exams. Guys, please subscribe, leave your comments on what you would like us to do and don't forget to visit our website. Most of our videos are not on YouTube. I repeat, most are not on YouTube. So it would be good if you can visit www.gcmaxwell.com where you have the remaining videos. We probably have a lot of free tutorials there where you can have access. Very soon, very soon, I am not saying it is going to be, these things might become not free anymore. So the better you have them now, the earlier you have them now, the better. I wish you the best as you prepare your exam and may God bless you. But don't forget to subscribe, to share this video, and to visit our website. Bye-bye.